Hello everyone and welcome back to Yoshi's Woolly World on the Nintendo Wii U. I am one more sheep yet again and today ladies and gentlemen we're going to be continuing onwards with the rest of World 3 of the game. Starting with this new stage that features a brand new gimmick we're going to have to start climbing on stuff ladies and gentlemen. If you remember back in Super Mario World there were crates and stuff we could grab onto. Well it's basically the similar sort of deal here except it's not crates. We have to climb on this wall in the background. And the only the only way you need to do, bleh, all you need to do in order to climb on this wall is hold up on the analog stick or d-pad and you'll happily be able to you know ladies and gents. And while you're honest you can basically poke your tongue out in any of the th three directions featuring left right and up. And you should be fine to go, what can I say? And I love this music. <laughs> I can't stress enough the soundtrack, it's so good. But uh, this, is a p this stage in particular is actually one of the more challenging stages in the game. It's very easy to get yourself killed and do stupid mistakes that can possibly get yourself ki killed in this one, folks. So just stay on your toes and don't try to make too many stupid mistakes, you know, and you'll be able to get through just fine. Whenever you reach this, this, these segments by here, you'll notice that the great things in the background that you can grab onto will start rolling in and out. Well, basically you need to be quick in order to jump up here in order to grab hold of this happy flower. Otherwise, well, obviously you won't be able to get it, will you, if you can't get it in time, but... No big deal if you miss it anyway, because, well, things, they even... The wall, the woolly walls eventually do come back out, you know, they, it, it's a, it's a rhythm sort of deal. But I digress, I digress, time to go up here for a secret. Now there's a lot of uh, hidden walls like that in this particular stage that have nothing but beads in them, so if you don't know what you're doing ladies and gentlemen, it can be quite tricky. And as always, if you pick up one of these Lakitu balls, you can throw the balls at other enemies and what have you to gain well, extra damage on the enemies, what can I say? <laughs> and if you scroll down here, there's the next happy flower. This is an extremely easy one to miss, ladies and gentlemen, so keep your eye out for that. I have done many a playthrough. Well, that's a lie, I haven't even finished my first playthrough of the game. Okay, as I was saying, I've done a stage many a time that's a bit more authentic, and I just ran straight past that area, that one wall, and. It, I had to redo this level like three to four times because I keep go. I keep. Go, I, my brain keeps going into autoplay when I play the stage, ladies and gentlemen. And when it goes into autoplay, I just do stupid things and I miss silly uh, objects like that. So, like, I know it's there, but I keep missing it. So, you know, you, you, you need to keep an eye out. That's all I can really say, ladies and gentlemen. And also, climbing up here will be the forced half. Force? Fourth happy flower. So, uh, yay! Yay! Got a new type of enemy as well, at least I think they're new. Which is the balloon shy guys. Whenever you see shy guys floating in the sky on a balloon, they will pop the well, eventually the balloons will pop and the shy guys will pop on down and try to stab you in the head. They'll try and boop you in the head. As a uh, good old Mario tries to do. Now don't worry about them because they're really no big deal. All you need to do is stand before stand before the area where they fall down. And uh They'll probably end up killing themselves if, uh, you know, they'll probably end up just landing straight in front of you harmlessly, you know, ladies and gentlemen. They basically function as this game's swamps. I don't know if this game actually has any real swamps later online, but as far as I can tell, they're basically the swamps of Yoshi, so, uh, easy enough enemy to deal with. And yeah, hey, we've already got all of the happy flowers in the stage. It's, uh, the stage is going by rather quickly now that I think about it. Hmm. It's still a 15 minute part, so the next stage must take me quite a bit a long time. Uh, either way, it still should be fine. I should be able to get through this just fine. But yeah, I cannot stress enough how many attempts I've had on a stage. Like, this stage took me... ages. <laughs> this part took me like an hour to get completed successfully, just because I kept making silly mistakes without forcing me to redo a lot of my recording and stuff. And no! <laughs> My OCD goes off whenever I see beads fall, and I'm like, no, I need to collect them all. I won't even use them until I get my next major power-up. At least I think the next major power-up is the one I'll be using a lot. 
Because spoiler alert, there is a power patch coming up that I am going to be constantly using from the point in the game that I unlock it. And honestly, I advise anyone else to use that power badge as well whenever they unlock it. I won't spoil what it is until we actually get it, but trust me ladies and gentlemen, it's a power badge we're going to be wanting. And it's a power badge we're going to be abusing the living hell out of. We're going to be milking that thing dry. Because... It just makes collecting things so much easier and, uh, you know, ha making things a lot more streamlined for myself, making things a lot less difficult is a good thing, you know? Like, I'm not one of those gamers that really think that you need to have a really hardcore, challenging, ultra-mega game just to make it fun, you know? you I like my easy games as well. It's, hey, I can get a free power badge. I love when that happens. But I like my games when they're easy as well, you know? I Obviously, I like my challenger points, but... I like them in doses. Like, it's not, I can't always go to my Mega Man games and go, Yeah, Mega Man! Wow! I like to play something a little bit easier on occasions, like Yoshi or... Sonic the Hodgehead, Hoghead, you know? Gotta go fast! But, uh, you might recognize the name of this mook. Big Montgomery returns, ladies and gentlemen, with a new... Well, yeah, actually, I'd say a slightly new boss pattern. And a new fortress that we need to deal with. And what is so great about this fortress? Well, ladies and gentlemen, what is so great about this fortress is one special thing. Just give her a second to load. There we go. As you can tell by here. Bubbles! Bubbles everywhere! Oh, 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 oh. You bouncy goodness of bubbles! I love bubbles! Bubbles, bubbly, bubbly. It makes me bubble up inside. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we need to use bubbles as platforms. Bu bu bubbles are our main platforming gimmick in this particular stage. All we need to do is land on a bubble and we will bounce off of it. These must be bloody dense bubbles from not to explode by us, us landing on them. But uh, yeah, you gotta land in the bubbles, bounce it up. Etc. Etc. And don't kill the shy guy. We need to use the shy guy in order to pop said bubble ball there. In order to land down here to collect that happy flower. Now, a lot of these bubbles you can pop by doing a ground pound, but not all of them. And I don't advise doing that because a lot of these bubbles, bubbles, a lot of these bubbles are basically platforming charges. We need to. We need these bubbles. Without these bubbles, we would be. Well, we would be. Uh, we would be sucking on some eggs, let's just see that. We would not be doing good if we uh, didn't have these bubbles, so... Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, whenever you see all these... A lot of this platforming in this game avoid... Well, in this game, this level uh, involves avoiding bubbles, jumping on bubbles, using bubbles for everything else. There's so many bubbles that one fish from Finding Nemo would freak out at this stage, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Although I do find that... The, state, the collectibles in this particular stage are actually quite easy to find if, as long as you know... Okay, I need to go right, so obviously I need to go up right here and suddenly... Uh, look! Wall! I know I know that piece of wall was clearly visible on the screen, but... You know, it, it still bring, it's still a good example. That's usually how we're going to find a lot of the collectibles in this stage. And I do like how the screen's a little bit zoomed out by here, so it does make it a little bit easier to find some of these collectibles. Like, these would probably be a lot harder to find if the screen was zoomed in like it normally is. Oh my god. I don't think we can I don't think the bubbles will crush you. But don't risk it. Don't stand underneath a bubble when it's coming down, and don't stand near the, near the wall, because... Trust me, I, I honestly don't want to risk it. I wouldn't risk it if I was you people. Because being crushed, that's not a good way to go, you know? It's got claustrophobic, it's terrifying, it's... Probably one of the worst ways someone could die. Apart from fire, fire is probably statistically the worst way someone can go, because just the sheer pain. Ugh. Wow, this part got morbid fast. Anyway, just use these donut platforms, and uh, yeah, there's that. And ladies and gentlemen, you might be wondering why do they call these things donut platforms? Well, through my intellectual studies throughout the years, I have come to a conclusion. They call these bubble, no, these bubbles, these platforms, donut platforms, for one reason. And that's because whenever you miss, 
what happens is you basically scream donuts every time. You know, that's why they're called donut platforms. That is my story. That is, I am sticking to it. That is my hypothesis. That is my professional opinion. Jokes aside, I have no idea where they got the name Bubble. Uh, bu not Bubbles. I got Bubbles on the mind. I don't know where they got the name Donuts from for those platforms. Maybe it's because they sort of got a hole in the middle, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Then we collect all the beads in this room in order to make the happy flower appear. So there. Be sure to do that. Basically, whenever you see a pipe, try and go through it. Because there's a, there's a very high chance that the pipes will lead you to a happy flower or another collectible pipe. So, like. I love it when I see pipes in this game because it's basically guaranteed collectible almost every time. I say almost every time because it's not a guaranteed one every time. It's almost guaranteed, you know? Because sometimes the pipes could be just that. A pipe. No collectible or nothing. It's just there. But, uh, I digress. Ah, the stage is rather generous with the health as well, which I kind of dig. Mainly because I, I know the last stage, I, I, die, I actually died a couple of times in the last stage just because I kept running into enemies and I kept losing health because of the enemies, so, yeah. Don't be ashamed if you die in this game, folks, you know. It, because of the way this game's laid out anyway, dying isn't, isn't that big a deal, it's just more of a nuisance, so. Yeah, don't don't worry about dying, folks. Don't worry. Just, I don't advise doing it because otherwise you'll, it'll become more and more tedious if you die, but... You know, everyone can make stupid mistakes, especially in their first time playing, what can I say? Anyway, time to collect this happy flower. Again, a very easy one to miss. Like, the best rule of fun, uh, rule of thumb, like, rule of thumb for collecting these things is usually just to look to the left or right from the exits. You know, you go through each of these rooms, and once you're sure you've collected everything in a room, then you go to the next one. Or you can be like me and be lazy and uh, replay the level like 50 times because I can't be bothered to search. But uh, I digress. Now honestly though, I do find collecting stuff in 3D games to be a lot more fun than they are in 2D games. While I like, I enjoy the collection aspect of all these Yoshi games, I, I, I do feel that they shouldn't be mandatory. Which, truth be told, I don't think they really are mandatory in this one, they just unlock you a couple of extra levels. I think. I don't know if there's any extra super special secret sexy ending you can unlock, but I'll be surprised if there is. Let's just say that. Hey, another happy flower. That one's actually quite an easy one to miss just because it's right up to the top of the screen, you know, folks. But there's the boss door. We can now go and deal with Big Montgomery yet again. We can teach this massive mole not to mess with Dash. Not to mess with Yoshi. Yoshi, good. Yoshi, win. Oh, bye! I, I sort of transitioned into Luigi then, unintentionally. <laughs> what is wrong with Luigi? Luigi is number one! Oh, bye! Oh no, here we go. Why are you not putting me on your Let's Plays more often? Shut up, Luigi. But why? But why? I want to be in a more Let's Plays. Shut up, Luigi. It's a Yoshi! Hey, yo, minion! I need to stop this Yoshi! I, I can't remember what voice I gave Kamek in the first part, so now I'm just giving him Miranda voice. What if my voice will mutate with Bob Kamek throughout the course of the game? So whenever I see Kamek talking later down the line, it'll end up becoming like this really English accent. I say, my dear boy! Another Yoshi appears to have a common foil to my plans! Yeah. <laughs> oh, or I'll make the Kamek sound like Skeletor from He Man. Yeah. Uh, what am I talking about? But anyway, mid Big Montgomery round two is a very easy boss fight. He's gonna generally use the exact same pattern, except now he's gonna jump up on a bunch of Monty moles and then throw a spike ball at you. When he does this, basically throw a wool yarn ball at him and uh, just... It'll, it'll make it vulnerable again and ground pound him on his buttocks. Uh, like I said before, nobody likes being nibbled on the buttocks and moles are no exception. And easy peasy boss fight. Actually, I... I actually kind of consider it easier than the first boss fight, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have victoried. Yes, I did just use the term victory as a verb, but we have just victory, and do not forget it. And yay, 100%. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> oh yeah, that stage as well, uh, like, that me versus possible there actually does... 
He's right. The stage does look a lot like the some like the second level in Castle of Illusion. I think it's second level anyway. The level with all the toy soldiers in Castle of Illusion. And that power badge by there is the single most greatest power badge in this game. Why? Oh, you will find out in the next part, ladies and gentlemen. And basically every chance you get, you'll probably be equipping this power badge from this point on. But with that, ladies and gents, that is it for this part. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoy. Don't be sheepish, people. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye! Mm, my voice broke a bit then.